Welcome to the Parkland Community Garden. We are rebuilding the Parkland neighborhood. Parkland is rising. We're doing this in partnership with the Parkland Neighborhood Improvement Association, the University of Louisville Center for Environmental Policy and Management, and the University of Kentucky Jefferson County Agricultural Extension Program. It's part of the entire Parkland Neighborhood Improvement Project, and we are in the heart of the Parkland neighborhood, which is District 1. 45 years ago, this is where people came to do business. You had a bank, you had uh, clean us, it's a record store, a grocery store, those kinds of services that people could walk to or drive through very quickly. But the late 1960s was a tumultuous time in our nation's history. There was efforts to integrate facilities and provide more equality for African Americans, uh, many of them who were getting education but feeling left out of the uh, American plan. After the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., riots broke out in the Parkland neighborhood just as they did in many other places across the country. And the thriving business district changed forever. It caused some uh, demolition of some of these uh, structures and some of the businesses to close down and not reopen. The city made an effort in the late 1970s to revitalize the area. This actually is a parking lot that was built by the city so you could have some off-street parking. But it wasn't as successful as organizers hoped. Bill Gatewood helped guide the effort back then, and he's at it again today. How do you energize an area like this with the assets that are there? But now, many nonprofits along with neighborhood groups have joined in the effort to build on those improvements in a way that's different from the neighboring Park Duval and West Broadway commercial districts to create something that's uniquely Parkland. We have a wonderful core of community folks who are part of that redevelopment. We've got a daycare that's opening on one side, a daycare that's opening on another. We've got the Masonic Temple that they're doing some work over there to rebuild the Masonic Temple. We've got the Parkland Scholar House that's opening up with 48 families. That's 200 plus individuals. They have a raised bed. Moppin Elementary School has a raised bed. So we feel the energy. It's there. We're just trying to ride that terrain and, and ride that wave and, and do what we can to make continuous development continue to happen. So, so one of the lessons is to get community engagement early because you get that buy-in and you get the ideas of what folks in the neighborhood will support. Hammers and lawnmowers are now common sounds as neighbors come together to reestablish the area's sense of community. We've got mulch this here. We just got the topsoil delivered. It's going to be an awesome day to actually build this garden. Popping up on the corner of Duminil and 28th Street, the Parkland Community Garden is a gathering spot and colorful showpiece for the blossoming neighborhood. This is something that folks have been waiting for. It's something that folks have been hungry for, and all they needed was that one seed. And then they said, you know what, I've got the water to water that seed. I've got the dirt for that seed. And you know what, I've got the shovel for that seed. So. Folks are extremely excited and I feel it and it's, it's contagious. District 1 Councilwoman Attica Scott invested $10,000 in the project. Gardens address a lot of different issues, health, food, food security, food deserts. It's a win-win for the community and for the city. It's our job to invest in the infrastructure of our neighborhoods. It's important to invest in the people, and that's what a garden is. The garden's been so popular, there's a waiting list, and more raised beds are being built. But this corner lot wasn't always an asset for the community. Most times it's high grass. Uh, so it was a big change for the community. Pastor Whitlow of Cavalry Missionary Baptist Church grew up on a farm, and he wanted to share the experience of gardening with the kids in his summer camp programs, but... We have some vacant property on the other side of 28th Street, and we wanted to do a garden. Uh, last year with our summer camp, we had 46 kids, and we wanted to do a garden, but we had soil problems. So therefore, when they came with this this year, our camp decided to buy five beds. So it's very exciting for our kids, and. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, producing whatever they want to grow and putting it back in the community. Slowly, new businesses are sprouting up along the corridor and vacant structures are being renovated. We're going to be doing some facade improvements. We're going to be doing some lighting to brighten up the area, bring some color to the neighborhood so that folks will want to invest in the Parkland neighborhood, which is part of West Louisville. People are dreaming big right now, which is what they should do, and then we'll figure out what's realistic and we'll try to make it happen. But it all fits into this whole 
plan of redeveloping the 28th Street corridor, of knowing that there was once a rich history that's here, and how do we bring that back? When Parkland and other neighborhoods in the city of Louisville rise, the entire city rises, and, and that's why this is an exciting initiative for District 1. Hi, I'm 9th District Councilwoman Tina Ward-Pugh here today at Kelly Green Biofuels in Goshen, Kentucky. Did you know that the extra oil you use for frying at home can be transformed into biodiesel to power tractors, buses, and maybe even your own car? We'll take a look at one local company trying to make Louisville greener and the air cleaner one gallon of biodiesel at a time. Hey, how are you? Doing great. Good to see you. Pleasure, yeah, you glad to have you out here. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us. Tell us a little bit about how uh, Kelly Green collects the used cooking oil. Sure. So Kelly Green can accept oil from any size restaurant, large or small. We have some small restaurants that prefer just to put their oil back in the five gallon carboys. Uh -huh. uh, we can collect it like that or we can provide uh, any size uh, drum to large steel bin uh, free of charge to the restaurant. We'll come in our pumper truck, pump it out of the bin with no mess. We're there and gone in just a few minutes. Uh, bring your oil back here to our facility and we can show you where it goes from there. It allows restaurants to, to take what is exist, an existing waste stream and to turn it into a, a PR opportunity, uh, something that people can be excited about. Their oil is not just going out the back door, it's going to be made into renewable fuel uh, locally. So people get excited about that. Customers really pay attention to that now. They want to know uh, what your business practices are um, and how you um, how you make your product and is it local uh, homegrown uh, and now this is a, another a green thing they can add to their menu absolutely uh, they want to know where your food's coming from and now they're going to want to know where your waste is going and we can provide assurance that it's all staying local being made into renewable fuel and being used in the community so um, you just showed us the big pumper truck uh, out there how you get your um, some of the some of the used cooking oil. The oil comes in and we're trying to let gravity do as much of the work for us as we can. We uh, got two 3,000 gallon comb bottom poly tanks up on stands and then all these totes are uh, 275 gallons. Okay. So all the water and food sediment is going to settle to the bottom. We'll drain out uh, the waste out of the bottom, let it further settle and some other totes and tanks we have here. Uh, until we are able to pull out this top beautiful layer. The oil has been loaded in this. We've already drained off the unusable portion off the bottom and I've got nice uh, settled oil coming out here. So we'll connect to the hose, open the valve, and this will go through this hose into inside into the processing room and that's where the conversion process will start. We open the valve outside for our clean oil, our settled oil, excuse me, to come in. Uh, and it's, I'm going to load it into this cleaning tank. This is an old propane tank stood up on end and retrofitted for biodiesel purposes. It's got uh, an open top and so what's going to happen is this gear pump is going to pump this oil uh, at uh, about 100 psi through a heater and then through three small centrifuges. Uh, and that's going to serve to get out the, any remaining sediment that's suspended in this top layer. And it's also uh, going to uh, let any moisture evaporate out the top of the tank. So you're going to be left with this nice clean oil uh, ready to go into the processing tank uh, to make biodiesel. So we're ready to load the oil into the tank, open the valve here, lets the oil flow in, close the bypass, the pump's ready to be kicked on. There it is. Clean oil would flow through here into the process tank and we'd fill it up. We totally empty the oil, the cleaner tank and fill up the process tank. Take a little sample, determine the acidity, uh, and then mix up our catalyst and methanol in this uh, mixing tank. So we'll load this tank methanol, dose in the sodium hydroxide through a hopper upstairs, and then turn on the air powered mixer. I grew up on a farm with a so I took what mechanical knowledge that I had, some, uh, a wonderful, wonderful teacher next door, and just with a lot of time and research and effort and a lot of failing, I was able to build the plants. One of the great things about biodiesel is that it is doable on many, many different scales. At this stage, we've already mixed our catalyst in the stainless tank in the back, and the clean oil has been loaded into the tank, and that will just uh, 
uh, be agitated by a high flow pump with some heat uh, over a period of time and that is where the biodiesel is actually created. And if you take a sample from this tank and let it settle, what you'll find is this uh, glycerin layer has dropped out of the oil and you're left with crude biodiesel uh, on top. And this is uh, the, like I say, the crude layer of what will be further refining that can be used uh, in any diesel engine. You all are partnering with the local school system. All of our students and teachers and parents, everyone in the community took home a canister. You just simply collect your used cooking oil. Parents then bring their used cooking oil here to school and it's a great educational tool for the kids to see this as well. And they pour it into this huge container and then um, it gets recycled and you know our hope is that this can be a uh, part of our a bus fuel. We made a difference in supplementing just by saving stuff that was going to go into a landfill or down the drain. So we've made it to the end of the process. Uh, we've got biodiesel flowing through our two ion exchange towers, removing the last of the catalyst, the last of the soaps, uh, absorbing a little glycerin, that's, any glycerin that's left suspended through three final filters, through our meter and out through the sight glass and so we need to Take a sample to do some testing. Tina, would you do the honors? I would love to do that. Put it under there and, and you can open it wide open. This is what we've gotten through all of this that you're gonna test. Quality verification to make sure it is ASTM quality to be used in any diesel engine. Now, how much do you sell this for? Green alternative for the same price as petroleum diesel. You can't beat it. Tell me how. There's no petroleum in this product. It's just B100 going right in the tank. The only thing you have to overcome is some knowledge about the product uh, and uh, obviously to have a diesel powered vehicle. Used cooking oil doesn't have to end up in our sewer system or the trash it can be a valuable green energy source instead. If you want to contact uh, our office, that number is 574-1109, or you can go online to kellygreen.com and learn more about Kelly Green Biofuels and how you can become a customer and a user of biodiesel for your family as well.